Hello, so it's Ad here and um, I want to talk to you about some technical stuff, some computer technical stuff, computer related technical stuff. So I thought I'd wear my Ubuntu hat here when I'm doing my technical videos and my cowboy hat when I'm doing t political and news videos and maybe no hat when I'm doing garage stuff and cars and things like that. <clears throat> so. My name's Ant and I live in, in, in Texas, North Texas, in the North Dallas area. Um, and I'm a bit of a geek actually at heart. I've been, um, uh, I'm in business orientated roles now and have been for many years, but I started off in the, uh, in the computer industry uh, as a technologist, as an engineer. Um, and, um, and so I kind of like to keep my technical skills up. And so, um, so one of the things that's been very interesting to me over the years is using these really small devices like IOT type devices and um, Raspberry Pis are a thing that have been very popular and I've had one in place on my network for a very long time actually uh, I have a Raspberry Pi uh, sitting um, on my network doing DHCP, DNS, um, proxy server, squid proxy server, uh, firewall um, and some other some other more recent services which i'll tell you about but uh you know this this raspberry pi has been absolutely fantastically reliable um it's uh it's attached to a to a kind of a spinning disk usb and so store files on it just random things you just drop onto it um and it just sits in the cupboard and it and, and actually up, at, up we had a bit of a storm last night but up until then it had been up for a near a year um without a reboot um, so, so this thing, um, hardly any memory, but yet it doesn't really consume very much, but does a lot of stuff and seems to perform quite well. You know, a lot of the traffic on our network goes through this device as it's a firewall and, um, it doesn't seem to add any latency or be a bottleneck to the, to the traffic going through it. So my daughter, um, was wondering what <clears throat> she should buy me for my birthday last year. And, uh, and that was about a year ago. And. And so I thought, well, why not give me another Raspberry Pi? Because the one I had is now, you know, used all the time on the network. And I don't really want to mess around with it too much because it does a pretty important job. So I thought, well, if I had another one, then I could hack around with that and, and start playing with it. And so I ended up getting a Raspberry Pi 3. And I got it with this kit that has this cable and, and it has a board on it. And I have a little packet around here somewhere. I have a packet of of diodes and things that you can attach onto the board and and then you can use python and other programming languages to turn lights on and off and and manipulate and you can have a switch on here that uh, you know does something to the code and and so you can really you know have code interacting with hardware hardware interacting with code um, and just kind of get keep your technical skills up which is actually why i do it i just want to keep my technical skills up so this Raspberry Pi came with a um, SD card, as you can see there. It's empty now, but it but it came with an SD card, 32 gig, if I remember rightly. Um, I needed an SD card for my dash cam in the car, so I um, so I thought, why? Well, I'm going to take the one. I'm not going to buy another SD card. I'm going to just take the one from here, and I'm going to get this device to boot from. You know the plethora of USB sticks that I had lying around, doing nothing, got from trade shows and other things that I've been to, and so I configured this Raspberry Pi to boot off the USB, a USB stick, and that was great. I I, I could use Etcher to copy uh, images that I downloaded, operating system images that I downloaded onto the USB stick, boot the device up using the USB stick, worked perfectly. I'd have Ubuntu, I'd have Debian, I'd have Raspberry, and I'd have all these different things on all these different sticks, different versions. Um, you can break things, it doesn't matter. You can like break operating systems and stuff, you pull it out, rebuild it, doesn't matter, right? Great. But then I had a bit of a brainwave. I was watching a uh, YouTube video about this guy who set up a cluster of these and used them for Kubernetes as a Kubernetes cluster. And so with the master node, and then there would be like a three or four or five worker nodes. I think it was a six node cluster. So five worker nodes and a master node in a Kubernetes cluster and having containers move between the devices and things like that. But every time he needed to make a change, he would have to go and 
SSH to every device and modify something on the SD card, right? a configuration file or update some code, do something that required a, a, you know, a change to something on the individual SD cards. And I thought, well, that's a bit crazy. You know, if these things are already connected to the network, why don't we boot this off the network? Why don't we have a, a TFTP Pixie method of getting this thing up and running? They're on the network anyway. You can have a, an NFS share somewhere that has the boot images for all these devices. You could have loads of them, 20, 30, 100, whatever. And you could have them all booting over the network. Um, and so in, in doing that analysis, then I thought to myself, well, if we're using this port for booting the device, um, how am I going to use this port to get the device on the internet, communicate to the device, have the device communicate to other devices, and those sorts of things. These have a Wi-Fi um, card in them, but I didn't want to use Wi-Fi. You know, being like technical people, you know, you want to try to push the edge. I want to use this port for everything. As a matter of fact, the... If I'd have had um, power over Ethernet here, um, that would be another thing that I think I would try and get working here. So you'd literally have to plug in Ethernet once, and that's it. You could just literally have this device powered, booted, and using using this port for all the network communications, um, and that would be just the that that would be just really cool. Because then you can just kind of buy like loads of these, plug them onto the network. Um, in my case, I only have to put power and Ethernet and and it and it and it works. So I managed to get this thing to boot on the network. So I'm going to show you a bit uh, about how 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 it all how it all comes together. Maybe not in one video, but in a, in a few videos. And if you've got any questions, or if I've made any wrong statements here, or you got any tips, please point them out in the um, in the notes below. Because uh, I'm first of all, I'm not an experienced YouTuber, um, and I'm I'm not you know I'm not in a technical role. I'm not really a technical guy, right? I'm more of a business guy. I do this to, to keep the skills up. So, um, so what I'm going to do now is, in in, in you know, in light of my m mediocre technical ability, is I'm going to get to this, as you probably recognise, as an SSH session, and it's the SSH session into my other Raspberry Pi, um, and I call that Raspberry Pi proxy too, as you can see here. And I'm in as root. I've sudoed to root, and I'm. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click in the window first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to var lib um, and tftp boot, and you can see, um, you know, just a few directories here, and and one of those directories, a couple of test directories, and and then the one with the IP address on it is the actual IP is a, is the actual directory that this device is booting from, and um, the DNS mask DHCP server uh, created directories that are unique for each Raspberry Pi for each IP address that it allocates um, it will add, it will create and use I don't know whether it creates the directory but it certainly uses the directory specific um, to that Raspberry Pi to that IP address that the DHCP server is allocated and that enables you to have an image uh, oh, sorry, a, a boot configuration for each Raspberry Pi. And each boot configuration will talk about or send the Raspberry Pi to a different NFS mount point. And so you could have loads of Raspberry Pis with many, many different NFS mount points uh, being used, well, one for each Raspberry Pi. And so you could have a massive cluster of Raspberry Pis all booting over the network, having their own sort of NFS mount point specific to them with their file system, which is absolutely fantastic. So if we go into this 10 address, and then um, I originally thought that this would be the directory that is used, but it but it seems to have created this this directory with this this um, strange code. I don't know whether it's the MAC address. I don't think it is the MAC address, but it, anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll have to look into that and see if... I know it's not long enough to be a MAC address. I, I, I think it might be a part of the MAC address. But anyway, so in this directory is the files that the Raspberry Pi uses to, to get its initial start. So if you go and look at an SD card in a Raspberry Pi, there's two partitions on the SD card. One's a fat file system um, that has these files in it. Um, and then the other one is an X4 um, uh, file system. Another partition is an X4 file system. And that has the root file system in it the operating system root file system. So all your files that you use by configuration files and applications and everything. 
Um, so the fat partition just gets the thing started. Um, and so think of what you see now as the fat partition you'd normally see on the SD card to get the thing started. Um, so some kernel images, init RAM disk, those sorts of things, and then some device drivers, those get the, the, the device started. And in this command.txt file, if I just count that, um, you will see um, some some configuration. You'll see it's specifying root is dev, dev NFS, so obviously the kernel that you're booting needs to have an understanding of NFS. It needs to have some of the modules required for NFS, which you make sure it has. And then you have NFS root, the IP address, and the mount point. And actually, as you can see here, the mount point is RAS bus. So I call it RAS bus because it's the Buster version of Rasparian. So Buster is a is a uh, I think the version 10 or higher 10 the version 10x 10.x of Debian and um, the Raspberry Pi Foundation you know created a build of that that has you know all the drivers and everything that 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 that, that, that are very convenient to have if you're going to load that operating system on a Raspberry Pi. So this environment that we're Looking at here, I'll show you the directory in a minute. That actually was a that actually was a Rasparian image based on the Buster version of Debian, downloaded from the Raspberry Pi.org website, uh, extracted into the NFS share. That now we're going to get this Raspberry Pi to use as its root file system. So, if we go to the mount point, the NFS mount point, and we have a look at that. Uh, you will see the root file system. So this is a standard, obviously a Linux root, standard looking Linux root file system um, with all of the with all of the files in it. So here's a tip. Make sure you preserve file permissions and ownership when you're copying your image um, to this NFS location because I made a few attempts at getting this started and errors all over the place because uh, if your mount point, your NFS mount point, masks um, permissions or or doesn't allow root um, to copy as root to the NFS mount point, uh, or does something strange with with ownership and permissions, um, you're going to end up with a file system that doesn't have the right setup. So when the Raspberry Pi starts, it's a mess. Um, the other thing I like about this, of course, is that because we're an NFS share here. We go to the NFS share here and we go to Buster, uh, one or zero. This is just basically Debian Buster. This is the Debian Buster file system right here. Absolutely fantastic. Um, so we can we can change that configuration file on the TFTP server to either point, point as Rasbust or Buster. Um, so we're using DNS mask as the method of getting IP addresses to these devices. So if we go to the DNS mask um, configuration location, um, I call it home.dns, and if you if I go up here, um, you'll see some settings. Specific, the TFTP root is bar TFTP boot, where we've just been, and TFTP unique root. Make sure that's set, and then you get a unique root in the TFTP environment for each Raspberry Pi that's booting up. So that's what I wanted to do, just show you now. What I want to do next is I want to boot up the Raspberry Pi, um, show you it booting, and go into a bit more depth on the configuration. So um, thanks for listening so far, and expect a follow-up video to this shortly.